Hello everyone, welcome to my YouTube channel Pathology Learning. I am Dr. Monica. So in the previous class, we were reading about necrosis and apoptosis which were the uh, forms of cell death. So in today's class, we will be re reading about the other forms of cell death. So let us see what are the forms of cell death. We know about necrosis, apoptosis which are the traditional forms of cell death. Now in the new edition of Robin's 10th edition, they had updated other forms of cell death like necroptosis, pyroptosis, ferroptosis and anoikis. So these new forms are potential uh, for being asked in the uh, MCQ exams. Right. So, in today's videos, we will be reading about necros necroptosis and pyroptosis. Ferroptosis is actually more and related with the free radical injury. So, we will be reading about that in the next video. So, what is anoikis which is also a form of cell death only. Anoikis literally means without a home. Okay. So, what does that mean? When there is loss of cell addition, cell cell addition, when that is lost, it will lead to a form of cell death which is a form of actually apoptosis. Okay. It is actually a form of apoptosis only. Suppose there is a squamous epithelium, we have intercellular junctions. So, when this intercellular junctions are being lost, the cell will become a separate cell rather than a combined epithelium, it will become a separate cell. So, that cell will undergo a uh, form of apoptosis which is called as anoikis. Okay. So, now moving on to necroptosis. What is necroptosis? As the word itself suggests, it is the hybrid between necrosis and apoptosis. Right. So, some part of it will represent necropsis kind of a, a thing and another part or some other mechanism kind of thing will be a part of the apoptosis. So, let us see what is that. So, it is actually the morphology which is being represented by the necrosis. The morphology of necroptosis form of cell death will be like that of a necrosis. That is the cell membrane will be damaged, the cell will undergo cell swelling and the nuclear condensation will happen. So, whenever there is membrane damage, it will lead to inflammation. We saw these are all features of necrosis, right? So, the same morphology of necrosis will be seen in necroptosis as well. So, why does that word tosis, apoptosis kind of thing which comes here along with that? Because it is having a pathway, the signaling pathways are somewhat similar to that of apoptosis. In apoptosis, we saw that there were two types of pathways which is the intrinsic pathway and extrinsic pathway right intrinsic was the mitochondrial pathway while the extrinsic pathway was the death receptor pathway so here necroptosis shares this extrinsic pathway kind of uh, pathway okay so the extrinsic pathway of the apoptosis is similar to that of these necroptosis okay not entirely because in extrinsic pathway we saw that the final uh, caspase which was the caspase 8 and 10 which got activated right here necroptosis differs from apoptosis in the sense that there is no caspase activation okay so this is also called as caspase independent program cell death program cell death because it is involving certain signaling pathways and is controlled by certain genes right so that is why it is called as a programmed cell death while it is not dependent on caspase. Unlike apoptosis, it is not dependent on caspase. So, it is also called as caspase independent program cell death. Okay. Since it is having the signaling pathways and the morphology of this is resembling that of a necrosis, it is also called as programmed necrosis. Okay. The question can come in the, in the options, they can give this other names of necroptosis. Okay. The other name of necroptosis are again programmed necrosis or caspase independent programmed cell death. We all conventionally know that we have related programmed cell death to apoptosis. Okay. So, but that is not the case. Programmed cell death simply means that it certain signaling pathways or genes are responsible and the mechanism of cell death happens in a regulated manner. Right. So, there are other forms of cell death which are also programmed cell death. One of which is necroptosis. So, we will be reading in the future classes about what are the other programmed cell death as well. So, moving on, uh, like apoptosis here again, uh, necroptosis can be physiological and pathological. So, in physiological causes, we have the mammalian growth plate formation, which is an example of the physiological cause. Moving on to the pathological causes, we have steatohepatitis, acute pancreatitis, IBD that is uh, Crohn's disease, myocardial infection and ischemia reperfusion injury, then neurodegenerative disorders like Alzheimer's, Parkinson's, uh, Huntington's and amyotropic lateral sclerosis. Then 
Infections like that of cytomegalovirus, CMV. The cytomegalovirus, they actually express caspase inhibitors. So when caspase inhibitors are being produced by the CMV, this will, uh, this can uh, evade the apoptosis, right? So as uh, apoptosis is related with caspase activation. And here when these caspases are getting inhibited, the CMV can uh, escape from this mechanism of cell death by apoptosis. So uh, uh, these CMV are in turn killed by necroptosis, which, ha uh, which can act against this even caspase inhibitors because caspase is not getting activated in necroptosis. So any of this can be asked in MCQ. So what is the mechanism of necroptosis? Like I mentioned, it will share the extrinsic pathway of, it will start like an extrinsic pathway of apoptosis. So in extrinsic pathway, we had this TNF receptors, which is the death receptor, also called as CD95 or FAS, right? These were all, of all family of this TNF receptors. So the same receptor come here. Suppose this is the cell here I have drawn and on the cell membrane, we have this TNS receptor. And whenever it's ligand, which is the TNF, which comes and binds with this TNF receptor, what will happen? It will in turn recruit this complex. This complex will be recruited. This complex is composed of RIP3 kinase, RIP1 kinase and a procaspase 8. Okay. So, this uh, complex is actually called as a ripoptosome. Since uh, uh, RIP means actually it is receptor interacting protein. RIP is receptor interacting protein. So, here even though this procaspase 8 is forming a part of this complex, this procaspase 8 never gets activated, okay. So, because if it gets activated, it will actually become the extrinsic pathway of apoptosis, right. So, this procaspase 8 will never get activated. It is just forming the complex of this ripoptosome. So, out of this ripoptosome, the RIP3 kinase is the most important one here because this RIP3 kinase will in turn cause the phosphorylation of some something called as an MLKL protein. There is an MLKL protein present in the cytoplasm. So, this RIP3 kinase, this complex actually will cause the phosphorylation of this MLKL protein. Now, what will happen is this MLKL will actually go and uh, insert itself into the membrane like an oligomer and it will result in the membrane damage. It can also result in uh, increased free radical production that again will result in the membrane damage. So, like I mentioned, whenever there is membrane damage, it will also always be associated with inflammation and this form of cell death will actually be morphologically resembling that of a necrosis. We can have certain drugs called as necrostatins. Necrostatins can actually inhibit this complex, this RIP kinase uh, complex, right? This ripoptosome can be inhibited by uh, drugs called as necrostatins and this can actually be implicated in the clinical therapy. Also, whenever we give cancer chemotherapy, I told it is mainly the necrosis and apoptosis which happens out of which the apoptosis is the most important pathway for cancer chemotherapy induced cell death, right? But uh, uh, the tumor cells can undergo certain mechanisms so that it can evade this apoptosis. So, some kind of chemotherapy is being developed currently based on this necroptosis so that those cancer cells which can actually evade uh, apoptosis are in turn being killed by this necroptosis because it is a different form of cell death, right? So, this uh, it is being important in the cancer chemotherapy as well. So, moving on to the next type of cell death which is the pyroptosis. So, as the name suggests, pyro itself means fever. Pyro anything means fever and ptosis means falling off. Like in apoptosis, we mentioned it is falling off. So, this fever is actually produced by an interleukin 1, which is the most important interleukin for causing fever. It is a fever inducing cytokine actually. So, this is also called as a programmed cell death associated with inflammation. Why? Because Programmed cell death because it was involving certain signaling pathways and here again the morphology of the cell death is like that of a necrosis. Morphology is that of a necrosis. Necrosis always has membrane damage associated with inflammation and here it is similar to apoptosis in the sense that there is caspase activation. The only other form of cell death in which caspase activation is present is pyroptosis other than apoptosis. Okay. Because in apoptosis, we had read that caspase activation is the hallmark of apoptosis, right? But here in pyroptosis also, we have caspase activation. Then how is it different from uh, apoptosis? 
Here, the CAS spaces which are activated are actually different CAS spaces. Here, there is activation of CAS space 1, 4, 5 and 11, out of which this CAS space 1 is the most important one. While in apoptosis, what are the CAS spaces we saw? CAS space 3, 6 and 7, which were the executional CAS spaces. Well, CAS space 8, 9, 10, 10, 8, 9 and 10 were the initiation CAS spaces. Right. So, the CAS spaces are different. So, this is actually a CAS space dependent program cell death only, but associated with the inflammation because the morphology is like that of a necrosis. So, let us see what is the mechanism of this pyroptosis. This happens when there is bacteria like flagellin which has this flagellin protein. Okay. So, bacteria containing this flagellin, this antigen is coming over here. This is the antigen which is coming over here. First, it will interact with this kind of a, a, a membrane receptor called as toll-like receptors. There are certain receptors called as pattern recognition receptors. Pattern recognition receptors. So, these are actually uh, part of the innate immunity. We will be reading about this in detail in the immunity chapter. So, these pattern recognition receptors are of various types. The most important one of which is the toll-like receptor. Other example is uh, uh, one, another example of a pattern recognition receptor is a nod like receptor which is a NLR. Okay? So, this toll like receptor is actually present on the cell membrane. So, whenever this flagellin protein comes and uh, attaches itself, attaches with the receptor that is the toll like receptor, it will in turn activate something and that will lead to the conversion of pro caspase 11 into active caspase 11. Okay? So, we will move on to the next other pathway. Suppose this flagellin is entering into the cytoplasm and it, in the cytoplasm, it will react with this nod-like receptor. Nod-like receptor is present inside the cytoplasm. So, this flagellin protein interacts with the nod-like receptor present in the cytoplasm and that will in turn form the formation of an inflama inflammasome. There is something called as an inflammasome that will get activated. The inflammasome will in turn activate the conversion of pro caspases 1, 4, 5, into their active forms. So, we here get an active caspase 1, 4 and 5 out of which the caspase 1 is the most important. So, this caspase 1, 4 and 5 will in turn actually cause the membrane damage. It can actually cause this caspase this can cause membrane damage that will result in the form of cell death called as necrosis. Right? Morphologically, it will resemble that of a cell death associated with inflammation. There will be membrane damage, inflammation and cellular swelling. And this caspase 11 can actually cause, uh, this can also cause the activation of this pro caspase 1, 4 and 5. So, both the mechanisms are interlinked. Toll like receptor resulting in the activation of caspase 11 and then nod like receptor resulting in the activation of caspase 1, 4 and 5. This pro caspase, uh, this caspase, activated caspase 11 can actually uh, cause the activation of this caspase 1, 4, 5. Okay. So, finally, what happened? All these CAS spaces resulted in the membrane damage resulting in the form of necrosis morphologically. And the, another important thing, the most important thing from this CAS space 1 is actually it will convert the pro interleukin 1, which is the cytokine, into its active form interleukin 1. Interleukin 1, I mentioned, I mentioned it is a fever inducing cytokine. So, this interleukin 1 will result in fever and also it will recruit, since it is a cytokine, it will recruit the leukocytes. This leukocyte recruitment is the one which is called as inflammation, right? So, this inflammation again will result in the formation of necrosis. So, in pyroptosis, what all we had to remember? It is the caspase 1, 4, 5 and 11 which was getting activated. So, this is a caspase dependent programmed cell death but here the morphology is that of a necrosis. So, it can also be called as caspase dependent programmed cell death or programmed cell death associated with inflammation. So, whenever this pyroptosis happens in excess, this interleukin uh, 1 will be produced in excess, right? Interleukin 1, whenever it is produced in excess, it will some, relate to something called as auto-inflammatory syndrome, okay? Increased pyroptosis can result in auto-inflammatory syndrome. So, we are done with necroptosis and pyroptosis. So, do revise it in uh, before going for exams. These are very important both for the professional MBBS uh, secondary exam people and also for need, uh, need PG appearance. Okay. So, we will meet in the next class which is on the uh, free radical injury and there we will discuss about the other form of cell death, the most important one of all which is the pyroptosis. So, thank you for listening. If you like my channel, consider subscribing and share it with your friends who can also benefit from this video. Thank you. Thank you.